The taxpayer-funded sock puppet feminist so-called charity known as Close the Gap is dangerous and evil. Here's an example of the ridiculous battle of the sexes propaganda that they produce. So the message here is women get paid less than men for doing the same work. You'd assume that's just not true because that's illegal. Even if it wasn't illegal, if you could get women to do a job for less than you could pay men to do the job, companies would employ women. The market would sort that out. But this is grievance mongering on a huge scale. So it's saying to girls, it's saying to adult female workers, when you get your pay slip, the way you should see it is that some money is effectively being stolen from you. Some of the money you earned hasn't gone to you because of some injustice. It's saying to every woman in Scotland, you are a victim. Whoever you are, no matter how much you earn, you'd be earning a bit more if you weren't a woman, which is just absolute nonsense. So this organisation, Close the Gap, it has the mission of addressing the gender pay gap, so-called, and it's one of the many taxpayer-funded feminist organisations in Scotland. They have about 10 people on their staff one way or another, so I guess its budget would be at least half a million pounds a year. Well, let's see what they've got to say about the gender pay gap. In Scotland, women working full-time earn 13% less than men working full-time. Well, it would be helpful if they said on average. It's rather misleading the way that's worded. And women working part-time earn 34% less than men working full-time. I think that's just a mistake. They're supposed to be comparing men and women both working part-time, I assume. This means that for one pound a man earns, a woman earns 87 pence if she works full-time and just 66 pence if she works part-time. The reasons for women's inequality are both historical and cultural and are still very much entrenched in our society. The traditional notion that women stay at home to look after the children and men go out to work has shaped how women and men are active in the workplace today. In other words, mothers in general want to prioritise time with their kids. Uh, the gender pay gap is caused by a number of factors and it can often be quite a complicated issue. There are, however, three main courses, occupational segregation, in other words, men and women tend to choose different jobs, caring responsibilities. We'll look at Close the Gap's final solution to remove caring responsibilities from women later on in the video, and discrimination within pay systems. But generally, women tend to want a different family work balance than men. They tend to prioritise family life, want to invest more time and energy in it. That's a great thing. I don't say that's a problem at all. That's something to be grateful for. It's a fantastic contribution to families and to wider society. In terms of work-life balance, again, in general, women tend not to go for the sort of careers that are going to wear you out, suck every ounce of energy out of you, leave you exhausted and dominate your existence, but might be very lucrative. They tend not to go for that. They want a better work-life balance. Who's to criticise them for that? Certainly not me. Another factor here that's not talked about very often is that virtually anything you measure about men and women, you'll find that women are more closely grouped uh, than men. So, for example, if you look at IQ scores, the IQ scores for males are more widely distributed than for females. So the result of that is that there are more men with extremely low IQs, there are more men with extremely high IQs. Now, in terms of earning potential, if you've got an extremely low IQ, your earning potential can't go below zero, I and mean, it might take you out of the job market completely, but that's as far as it can go. Some of an extremely high IQ, that might result in an astronomical salary, and that will affect the average, the mean, quite substantially. Now, there's a way of getting around this problem to have a fairer assessment of the pay of men relative to women, and that is to use the median, which looks at the middle man or the average man, if you like, and the average woman and makes that comparison, rather than using the mean, which is skewed by the very, very few, very high salaries. So if you use the median, the pay gap might come out at 9% or so, but obviously close the gap, choose to use the mean, despite the fact that it's obviously flawed in this case, which gives this figure of 13%. But anyway, the gender pay gap, I think, is not a problem. It's an expression of diversity that we can celebrate, and there's no need to try to eliminate it. Men and women do not have to be the same in their attitude to career, work-life balance, etc., now, Close the Gap in particular talk about caring responsibilities. I mean, looking after your kids, investing in family life, investing in the family home, they're hugely valuable things, but Close the Gap, just not interested. They count for nothing. 
women should be doing their feminist duty and working. And if they're not doing that, they're wrong. Women need to be more like men in their approach to their careers. Now, obviously, young kids need looking after. And generally, it tends to be women who want to do it. Now, close the gap and the Scottish government think, OK, but the only way they want that to happen is by women getting paid to look after other people's kids. And that's why we see the huge expansion in government funded, taxpayer funded childcare being made available. I also think it'd be interesting to ask some of the people who work for these charities, why did you choose to be a feminist campaigner? Why didn't you choose to be a civil engineer or go and work on an oil rig? I wonder what they'd say. Right, anyway, bad ideas matter. And if we look at the results of this philosophy, it's got some pretty negative consequences. So we start from the issue of Females tending to choose different courses of study, are therefore leading into different professions, different careers. It tends to be in general, women would go for more people-centered careers, males generally to more things-centered careers. So why do the predominantly male occupations tend to get paid, for, paid more? Well, a big factor is just the market. I mean, a business will pay what it needs to, to get the caliber and qualifications of a person that they want or that they need. Now, you may say, for example, uh, Glasgow City Council wasn't do doing that. Maybe a council might be paying the amount that unions have managed to pressure them into. Maybe the men have been more assertive in their pay negotiations through the unions. Now, if people disagree with that, they could oppose that whole system of determining pay. But I don't hear anyone doing that. In fact, the unions are right in the centre of this issue. But even if that was the case, even if union pressure had artificially inflated salaries in male-dominated professions, that doesn't mean that women are underpaid. It just would mean that men are overpaid. And for example, in a council, that should be a political issue, that they should be saying we're actually paying a certain job more than we need to. And that could be reined in a little bit, obviously, within the confines of the living wage or the minimum wage. Some people suggest there's just a tradition of a man's wage and a woman's wage. Now again with that, that would result in unnecessarily high wages being paid to some people. But again, even if that was the case, even if that's the case, that's not unfair to women. Women have looked at the jobs available and they've chosen on the basis of knowing all the facts, the salaries, they've chosen the job that they've got and they've entered into that contract voluntarily. It hasn't been unfair, so there's no cause for compensation. As soon as you start trying to achieve so-called social justice by trying to treat people as a member of a group rather than as an individual, you end up with injustice. So, for example, uh, males who are working as cooks or cleaners for a council, they're going to see their salaries tending to go up. If you're working as a bin collector or a gardener for a council, then you're quite likely to see your salary going down, even whether you're female or a male. What these people like Close the Gap want, they want pay to be set by a box ticking exercise, not by market forces, but by a box ticking exercise overseen by the government. It's a step towards the state setting salaries, uh, obviously in councils, uh, government agencies, but also in private businesses as well. Companies now have to publish their gender pay gap. Now you can imagine if you're running a business, if you publish your gender pay gap and it's 20%, you're pretty worried. You're thinking, right, I could end up with a Glasgow City Council style claim against my business that could shut us down. We've got to do something about it. What do you do about it? Obviously, increase the salaries and the jobs where there's more women. Uh, restrict the salaries. Don't increase the salaries where there are more men. When it comes to promotion time, get a few more women promoted, a few less men. That's already happening, obviously in lots of businesses, lots of employers around the country. Now, why are men not fighting back? Why are they being, it appears to be, so feeble and just accepting that they've been discriminated against without putting up a fight? Well, there's various reasons for that. One is that if you do object to it, you'll face really fierce opposition. Look at James Damore at Google. He started approaching this issue and they just fired him. From a man's point of view, the best option, selfishly speaking, is to keep your head down, go with the flow, and then even though the odds are stacked against you, you will have as good a chance as any man of getting one of the promotions that are available. But if you speak out against the rigged system, you're probably destroying your own chances. So it's not immense self-interest to oppose it, but surely 
they can rise above that and campaign for fairness in the workplace. I think another factor here, I think men naturally, I think it's built in, have got a tendency to see it as their responsibility to protect women. So the idea of going into a fight with women, now in this it wouldn't actually be a fight with women, it's a fight against an ideology, but maybe it would seem like it was going into a fight with women. A lot of men really wouldn't feel comfortable with doing that. That's not something that comes naturally to them at all. But close the gap. They'd be quite happy to bankrupt public service providers, to put businesses out of business, and they're absolutely prepared to see injustices against men. That will result in disillusionment in men, particularly with boys, as they grow up feeling that the odds are stacked against them. There are always special projects, there are special privileges, special encouragements for girls, and they're just a sort of afterthought. Now on their website, Close the Gap provide a letter for women to use to write to their employer, pointing out the gender pay gap and basically saying to them, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to have a, an equal pay audit? So that most people, if they want to earn more money, they seek promotion or to work longer hours or to increase responsibilities, look for another job even. But why bother with all those things when you can just send a letter to your employer and they will feel pressurized into doing something that's going to result in women getting paid more and men getting paid less. Easy. Of course, like any sock puppet charity worth its salt, it produces indoctrination materials for schools. Let's have a look at some of these. Be what you want. The assumption is that women are not choosing the careers that they want to, that somehow something else is influencing it. They can't possibly accept the possibility that it is actually that men and women prefer to do different things. So anyway, this is a resource for teachers so they know what to teach the kids. So there's an activity for the kids to do where they have to, they're given cards, they have to match up the jobs with the salaries and the percentage of them that are women. Okay, so for example, games designer, only 4% of them are women. That's a terrible injustice. What are we going to do about it? Parents need to be forcing their daughters to play on the PS4 for longer. I don't know. But anyway, and so you then move on to the next part of the lesson. You've got to ask the children what they thought of the answers whether they were surprised, whether they thought it was fair and so on. Lead a discussion on the issues raised, i.e. occupational segregation and the undervaluing of women's work. In other words, don't lead a discussion. It appears to be discussion, but it's actually an indoctrination session. Perfectly clear cut, and this is what your taxes pay for. Uh, again, I say this lots and lots of times. If you think, oh, I don't go along with this sort of thing, I vote Conservative. The Conservative Party it's bought into this 100% and they're right behind it. So I explained why I think this organisation Close the Gap is dangerous. I also said I think they're evil. That's quite an accusation. Well, let's have a look at that. Well, the 20th century is replete with examples of fanatics willing to engage in industrial scale slaughter to further the goal of equality. And Close the Gap supports the decriminalisation of abortion, which means that they support the facilitation of abortion right up to full term, right up to the point of birth. Now, you might think, what's that got to do with them? Well, obviously, women need to be able to pursue their careers unencumbered by the inconvenience of pregnancy and motherhood if the pay gap is to be closed. So close the gap are willing to sacrifice the unborn on the altar of feminist extremism at taxpayers' expense. Now, as the Scottish Family Party, we would reduce Close the Gap's funding by somewhere in the region of 100%. Now, in the Scottish Parliament, men's interests need representing. That doesn't mean we, we need more men in the Parliament. There's plenty of men, but they're all either feminists or cowards, and as I've said before, including the Conservatives. We need people, men or women, it doesn't matter, to argue against the insidious so-called social justice agenda. And as the Scottish Family Party, that will be our job. That's one of our goals. So do support us. You can join the party by the link below. You can donate to us. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.